Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Baka. This is Moray Medea Yahoo bin Yashrael. Want to welcome you to a pre recorded broadcast of My Living Branch. And we want to thank you. We're going to do part three. Uh, and today is going to be interesting. I received this from the fathers. Of course, you know, last week we didn't have a live stream due to things beyond my control. And of course, we will be going back live as soon as conditions permit. So until then, we'll be doing pre-recorded services. I will, you know, be letting you know when we'll be doing the live stream again. So today we're going to be talking about the challenge to change me part three. Now this one um, is going to be more prophetic and when I mean prophetic this is what the father actually spoke to me and I want to give it last week but for whatever reason once I missed the live stream uh, I felt in my, I was feeling in the Ruach that he wanted me to hold off. So I did that. Even last night, I was going to record it. Um, but I kept feeling a hold off. So I feel a release this morning um, after I woke up to go ahead and do this message. So I'm going to do it. It's not going to be a lengthy message. But it's something I really want you to take to heart. Because this is... Um, very necessary for you. Okay, so let's pray first. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah, Lehinu Malak HaAlam. Father, we say, Toda Rabbah for another Shabbat. We ask you, Father, to give us wisdom, knowledge, memory, understanding, fear of Elohim, all the things that we need in order to move forward and do your will. Thank you, Father, for giving us these messages and helping us to see that we can change. We can be more like you. Father, we thank you. We say, Toda Rabbah, in the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah, Amin. So, the, we've had some pretty powerful feedback on part one and part two. People have been immensely enjoying. So, as I was pondering and thinking um, on these lessons, Father spoke to me and gave me something to consider that I had not considered when doing this lesson. And many of us, we work so hard to change. I mean, we, we're just working all the time. Uh, it's, it's like a non-stop uh, non effort. And then the father started to open my eyes to some things about rest. I'm like, rest? And then I began to see his cycle. His cycle is you work, then you rest. You work six days, you rest the seventh day. So even when we are working on ourself, we have to have built in. A time of rest because we'll see in this lesson what rest actually does for us it helps us and when we don't allow ourselves to rest after we've worked so hard to change things we don't allow ourselves to rest we just constantly just working 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 and trying to change things in our life, trying to um, fortify ourselves. We don't allow ourselves to rest. Then that change is not as effective as it could have been. And this was a, a revelation to me. So we're going to start out by looking at the definition of rest. Shabbat. Okay. Here you go right here. Shabbat. Now. 
we're not per se looking at observe the Shabbat formally, rest, do religious practice of ceasing from all activity or work on the seventh day of the week as prescribed by Elohim. As an extension of ceasing from any activity or state. Okay. In the simplest form, the call form to stop, cease, be still, be quiet. Have an activity no longer continue. Put to an end. So, and this is from the Dictionary of Biblical Languages with Semitic Domains, Hebrew Old Testament. So, let's go here. We're going to do some reading first. Okay, and what I'm trying to show you is within your cycle of change, you have to have in that cycle rest built in. And I'll explain why in a few minutes, but I want to show you that the father established this pattern in creation. Okay, this is in Genesis 2 verse 1, Bereshit chapter 2 verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, Elohim, just to show you his Elohim there. Ended his work which he had made. He rested Shabbat, or in this particular form, um, it's in the simple form, um, third person masculine singular. So here we have Yoshbot, Yishbot. So, it means to cease or to rest. So, that's where we get, he rested, or he ceased, on the seventh day from all his work. Okay. Which he had made. And Elohim blessed. the seventh day and sanctified it or set it apart because that in it he had rested from all his work which Elohim made created and made okay so in the in the cycle he worked six days but the seventh day he rested so even in your pattern of working on yourself to create a new you so that you're more like him, you have to have rest built into the cycle. Okay, and we'll get more into that here shortly. I know I'm saying we'll get more into it, but. We are going to get more into it. Okay. Now, we always read um, in our joint service, we always read the Shema. And here we have the commands in Exodus 20. Now, I want you to notice he tells us, remember the Shabbat day to keep it set apart. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But on the seventh day. So remember. The rest comes. At the end of the cycle. Okay. And we'll explain that. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah the Elohim. In it thou should not do any work, thy nor thy sons, nor thy daughters, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger in the in within thy gates. For in six days you who have made heavens and the earth, the sea and all 
that in them is and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, if Yahuwah blessed the Shabbat day and set it apart. Okay. So let's go back over and, and kind of let's hash this out a little bit. So let's talk about rest. What you haven't been doing, because many of you, you've been you've been at this for so long and you you might not have saw, uh, seen this concept or thought about it in this way, even when you're working to change yourself. OK, my question is, did you forget to rest? And I'm going to use this example. So when you're building, going to the gym, you're building muscles. When you work those muscles out, you're causing them to exert themselves. Okay. You have to also, after you've worked hard to get the maximum benefit, if you just keep working those muscles, working those muscles, working those muscles, and not resting those muscles, you're not giving those muscles a chance to rebuild. So, there's a cycle built into even that to grow bigger and stronger after you have worked. And I, and I don't know why I heard the, the rock just tell me, um, you know, after you have done the will of Elohim, you have need of patience that you might receive the reward. After you have been working to change yourself, there should be built into that a place where you rest. Where all of these changes that you are trying to implement within yourself, all the transformations that you're trying to implement in yourself are allowed to um, you as your Ruach, you are allowed to rest. So that the body can rebuild and be stronger. The mind and the spirit and soul can rebuild and be stronger. But if you just constantly add it, there's no time for a good word would be recovery. Another word we're going to use is growth. So this, this period of rest that's built in, you know, take Take time out. Relax your mind. Get your mind in a good place. You know, uh, you know, for a second, you know, don't worry about change, but just relax and let it engulf you. Just cease from it. And and it'll it will allow the changes that you have taken place, which you've been working so hard at to grow and to rebuild and to recover so that you can start the cycle of working on yourself again. Because some of us, we beat ourselves up so hard. I mean, we push ourselves so hard, but we don't push ourselves to rest. We don't build into our cycles a time of recovery, a time for the growth to take place, a time for the the muscles to, you know, regrow and be strengthened. We don't do that. We just constantly bombard ourselves day in, day out. Boom, 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 boom. And the muscles, you know, we we don't go as we don't see as much change as we could because we don't allow a time of rest and recovery. Okay. So I want you to think about this. Uh, this is what was uh, given to me as I was thinking about this. Your greatest growth will take place when you rest because that's when your body has a chance to recover and rebuild. See, when you work your muscles, you're breaking them down. You know, you're, you're causing your muscles to contract and, you know, you're actually you're not destroying them, but you're creating friction. But you have to allow a time for those muscles to regain strength so that 
and, and it'll be notable strength. But you haven't noticed your strength because you haven't allowed yourself time to recover. A time of rest, a time of growth built into your cycle. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what you can do during that time period. So I want you to remember this. Your greatest growth will take place when you rest. Okay. So let's talk about recovery time. Okay. You have to allow yourself, once you've been working, a time for recovery. Okay. And, and you know, many of us want to be a wall city. Okay. But even when you're building a wall, and you put in rocks and cement or mortar. Once you work to build it, you have to allow time for that wall to settle. So, so that which the mortar that you put between the rocks and the bricks can harden. But if you don't allow that time to harden and you start, you know, um, pushing on the wall and doing things with the wall and you haven't allowed it to cure, then that wall is not going to be as sturdy as it could have been. And if you don't allow yourself time for recovery after you've been working so hard to, you've been challenging yourself, you've been pushing yourself. If you don't allow yourself time for recovery, you're not going to be as strong or as fast as you could be because you didn't allow proper time for rest and recovery. Okay. So I hope you're getting the gist of where I'm going with this. So in your process, the challenge to change me, I also want you to challenge yourself to rest so that that which you have challenged yourself to change can be a permanent change so that it can be a part of you. So it can, um, when it, when the muscles rebuild, they rebuild, they build stronger, they become faster. So don't get pulled into the constant cycle of just work, 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 work. Even when it's working on you, but know that there is a cycle there. Work, rest, work, rest, work, rest. And I think that's what the father was trying to get across to me last week when I was put in a position where I couldn't have service and he forced me uh, when I say forced it was beyond my control that I couldn't do a live stream so I'm like okay father uh, now some of us would have beat ourselves up you know we we would have um You know, really tried to figure out a way to do it. But sometimes I've learned in this whole process of growth to when things happen, kind of step back and say, OK, Father, you're trying to teach me something. Are you trying to show me something or is there something I'm not getting? So what it caused me to do, it caused me to rest in him. It caused me to look for him. To him to cease my thought process to cease what I was doing and to step back and say okay father you sh you're showing me something here and this when all of this came to me and I'm like okay father I see I got you because I had originally planned a different lesson but that wasn't That'll be next week's lesson. 
But this is the lesson he wanted me to give for this week. And he caused me to rest last week so that I could ponder, really think this lesson over. So I said, told our father. And I didn't beat myself up because I wasn't able to stream live. And we'll be going back live soon, um, maybe a month. So I'm just, just working. I'm no different than you. I'm working the processes out. I'm trying to hear him clearly. I'm trying to walk this path. And follow his instructions. Now, he, he just brought something up to me. When, when you are trying to rest, you cannot be emotionally driven what do i mean by this you're gonna feel the need to push 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 let's get out you know I, I'm, I'm trying to get this change i need that change and you're just pushing 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 and and that can be an emotional drive but he's saying you have to have a cycle built in where you disconnect from your emotional drive and you just rest allow yourself to recover and as I've said before your period of rest is going to be where you see your greatest growth because your muscles once they've been worked hard and they've been allowed to recover they've been rested now they're at peak performance now you'll feel strengthened you'll even look different some of us spiritually are like we've been up for two or three days and we haven't rested but when you rest yourself, it allows you to be strengthened. It allows you to grow. All when you're resting, all the all the uh, think about when you sleep at night. We talked about it. Your conscious mind disconnects. Your subconscious mind is at work. Your body is in a state. Probably uh, I've heard some say that sleep is the closest thing to death. But it's in a state where all the vital functions are at a minimum. Only what's necessary and is allowing you to recover. It's allowing you to grow. Think about it. When children start to hit growth spurts, they start to sleep longer. They sleep more. So you, you're wondering why you feel the urge to rest more. It's a period of growth. But you think you have to push, 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 push all the time. And it's not a, a affording you the opportunity to grow because you aren't resting. So I want to go back over. I want to read you something. And it's in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. And I want you to take this to heart. If you work, there's a, there's a time to rest. To everything there is a season. A time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain 
from embracing. A time to get, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to cast away, a time to rent, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, a time of peace. What profit doth he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which Elohim has given to the sons of men to be exercised in. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that Elohim make it from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good thing in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. It is a gift of Elohim. I know that whatsoever Elohim doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And Elohim doeth it, that man shall fear before him. And that which has been, uh, which hath been, is now. And that which is to be has already been. Elohim requireth that which is past. So, you didn't see it exactly, but there's a time to work and a time to rest. You've got to figure out the cycle. Where is the best point for you to rest? I'm not necessarily talking about on the Shabbat day. Okay, but where in the cycle of changing you do you rest so that you can recover your muscles, your spiritual muscles can rebuild and you can grow. So I want you to think about that. Okay, and I'll, here's some of your tools that I'm gonna get that I'm gonna just mention. Um, prayer and worship. Make sure you're incorporating these, because if you're incorporating these, allow for a period where your focus is not so much you, but your focus is Him. Remember, He He said. When, when he was praying uh, the model prayer for what's called the disciples prayer to let his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're praying his will. We are worshiping him. We're taking time out to do these. And doing when you're doing these, your focus is not so much on you know, changing you, but it's a it's like a period of rest. You know, where you're allowing yourself to recover. Worship especially. Worship taking time out to esteem him, to honor him, to tell him of his goodness. So now the focus is not about you so you're shifting you're resting yourself you're focusing on him so I know this lesson was a little bit shorter today and that's fine but I want you to get and understand the cycle you have, you've been working so hard some of us have really, I mean, we've really been pushing ourselves, but we haven't incorporated in our challenge to change a period of rest and recovery. And 
growth. That's how you're going to get stronger. That's how you're going to get faster. That's how you're going to reach your objective. It's not all going to happen in one day. So we've got to incorporate patterns that the Father has established uh, when he changed things. Because remember, when you go back, it says that the earth was void. Thank you, Father. Okay. When, when the Father set out to change things, you know, after he changed and did the works, the seventh day he rested. But in the beginning, it didn't have, it wasn't what he wanted. Now, we won't get into how it got that way. But what we're getting into is how to make it better. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Ruach or the spirit of Elohim hovered above the face of the waters. Elohim said, let there be light. So, of course, the first element that we have to have. To bring about change. It's going to be light. you got to have the word. Remember. That word is a lamp unto my feet. A light unto my path. Okay. If you don't have the light. You can't see what you're doing. Many of us cannot work in the dark. Because that's not how we were built. Or designed to do. We need light to work. That's why there's a daytime. There's a nighttime. Daytime is designed for work, those are you supposed to be. I know what man has done today, but we're not talking about man. Daytime is is when work takes takes place. Nighttime is when rest takes place. So notice, there's work, then there's rest. It's built into the father's cycles. There's work, there's rest. Okay. So, you know, we could do a whole thing about, you know, the change. There's some separating that has to take place. You know, um, you have to properly learn how to separate. You've got to know what is built for working when to work when to rest you've got to figure out those cycles in your life and observe them and you know we we could we could go on and on um but i just wanted you to see that where we have to start what we have to start doing Hopefully, this shorter lesson has been a blessing to you and you truly understand what I'm saying. So, you know, if you have comments, shoot me an email. Info at mylivingbrains.org. You know, let me know if this lesson helped you in any way. Okay, I want to pray. I want to pray for those that are striving to change and to be better. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malach HaAlam. Father, we say Toda Rabbah for all your mercy, for all your favor that you've shown us. We're undeserving. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, our transgressions, our iniquities, cause, Father, us to be the children that you are calling us to be. Help us, Father, to build into the cycle of work when we're trying to change ourselves, and trying to challenge ourselves and be more like you. Help us to build in a period of rest and recovery and growth. Father, we thank you now for this lesson. 
Father, let this speak to the heart of your people. Not because I taught it, but because your people need it. Let the Ruach move and touch their hearts. And let them understand what they have to do from this point forward. Father, I give you praise, honor, and esteem. I esteem you greatly. And for every person out there, Father, whose heart you've touched to mend their past and to solidify their future, build a, uh, a solid present future so that they can uh, present um, a solid present so that their future will be brighter. I pray, Father, that you give them the hope that they need. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, I give you praise, honor, and esteem this day. Hallelujah. I mean. Alrighty, Ms. Bakai. Told I read by. Like I said, shoot me an email if you have any questions. Okay, if you get a chance, visit our resource center, um, Hebrew Foundation Resource Center. And you see the website right down here. And if you would like to um, get our, we have some bedtime stories for children, the Hebrew Ten Commandments, and also the Hebrew Passover story. You can get those. If you go over to Amazon, just simply Google the title, and you'll be able to find those over there and order them. They're great for teaching and training our children. Okay, if you'd like to join our book market witnessing team, you can do so. Go to www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org. And that will uh, we'll get those bookmarkers out to you. And you can start witnessing. Okay, if you'd like to support us, you can. You can do so. If you don't want to remember these webs these addresses, you can go to the website they're right on there uh, you can do so by cash out paypal or you can do so um by sending your donations through the mail this challenge to change me part three might not seem necessary but i want you to rethink it that you need to rest you've been going to the gym of change and you're wondering why you haven't seen results. One of the reasons is you keep you haven't built in two days of rest where your body can rebuild, recuperate, grow. You're stiff and sore all the time and you wonder why. You got to let the body rest. And then once once it's ready, you can get back in there, hit it hard again. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you not to challenge yourself, not to push yourself. But what I am telling you is that once you've done that, you've got to allow what you've uh, done a chance to rebuild, to grow, to rest. So that you can receive maximum benefit. So Ms. Baka, I love you. Um, and like I said again, hopefully we'll be back on live stream in a couple weeks. But until then, we'll still be bringing the lessons. All right, this is Maureen Medad Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom.